Hello, my name is Jeffrey Jaron Hackelman, and the technology I have chosen to present comes from the United States Post Office, called the PASS system. PASS stands for the Passive Adaptive Scanning System. I would like to explain one typical day in the life of the post office. According to the post office's website, 227 million is earned in revenue every single day in US dollars. 5.9 million dollars is paid to postal employees, salaries and benefits. 509 million dollars, excuse me, 509 million mail pieces are processed and delivered each day. 21.2 million is the average number of mail pieces processed each hour and 353 thousand is the average number of mail pieces processed each minute. 206 million pieces of first class mail processed and delivered each day. 7,184 is the number of letter carriers who deliver mail entirely on foot. 122,000 is the number of address changes processed per day. 3,630 is the number of addresses added to our delivery network each day. 4.1 million is the number of people who visit U United States Post Office or USPS.com. 306,930 is the number of money orders issued and 1.5 million dollars is spent at self-service kiosks per day at the post office lobbies. Zip codes are the foundation for how the post office sorts mail. The post office has established large plants in almost every major city in the U.S. Each of these plants receives mail from all over the world. Plant workers sort and distribute every letter, flat and parcel, that comes for their respective zones. A zone is a term that the post office refers uses to refer to a zip code. These plants deliver all of the mail to its local location or station. Every local station delivers mail for one or more zones. Before the invention of the PASS system, mail processing clerks sorted every piece of mail by memory. When someone mails a letter or package from the post office, it is sent first to the plant that the station you sent from belongs to. There, the plant sorts the outgoing mail to be shipped either by ground or by air to whatever city, state, or country the mail piece is addressed to. If the mail is traveling to another part of the U.S., it arrives to the plant that covers the area where the final destination is. The clerks at the plants will sort all mail into their zones. After the mail is delivered to the station that manages those specific zones, station clerks sort the mail again into specific carrier routes. Once sorted into carrier routes, the mail carriers can finally transport the mail to the receiving customer. For decades, this immense sorting process was done by hand and by memory. Clerks working in the plants were required to memorize zone schemes. They had to be able to look at every address and make sure the zip code was correct and sort it to be taken to the right station. Local station clerks were also required to memorize schemes only they are required to memorize every single address in, in the zones they cover. They have to know what route to give it to. This is extremely challenging, especially when this process is always hard pressed to meet a deadline. The PASS system is a computer system that establishes mail tracking and automatic sorting. Now a clerk scans a parcel, letter, or flat at every location from the time it leaves the sender's hands to when it enters the receivers. This allows customers to know exactly where their mail is. It also helps the post office find mail more efficiently in the event that it gets lost. 
every time the mail needs to be sorted either by zone or by carrier route, this system says the exact route it needs to go to. Clerks use hand scanners attached to their fingers or overhead boom scanners. When they scan a parcel, for example, a voice from the computer says Route 31 or Route 74. All the clerk has to do is scan, listen, and sort. The speed and precision of sorting by the mail clerks has grown immensely thanks to this technology. In the past, letter writing was a main source of long distance communication. With the invention of phones and internet, writing letters or snail mail as commonly referred to, has become almost completely obsolete. However, the post office continues to boom as a business because of the rise in internet sales. Almost every major retailer like Walmart, Target, Macy's, or JCPenney has websites where one has access to products that they can order from, from the website itself. These websites not only contain a huge amount of products, but also contain products that are not always sold in their normal retail locations. A person can place these online orders and receive them on their doorsteps in a matter of a few days. This has created a huge business for the post office. In recent years, the post office and Amazon agreed to a contract deal where all of Amazon's packages will be delivered by post office carriers. That alone has more than doubled the typical mail flow. Two of the post office's biggest competitors are FedEx and UPS. The post office has such detailed delivery system, specifically with respect to carrier routes, that FedEx and UPS often find it more cost efficient to drop their parcels off to the post office and pay them to be delivered. So when people choose to take their business to FedEx or UPS to purposefully avoid using the post office as their form of delivery, they have a good chance of getting their mail delivered by a post office carrier anyway. There are many other common misconceptions. Many people believe that the post office receives financial aid from taxes because it is part of a government agency. This is untrue. In 1971, it was reorganized and now is in fact entirely self-sufficient financially. I served a two-year church mission in the country of Peru in South America. While serving there, I had little to no communication with the outside world as I served. One of the things I got to do was write letters and send mail. While in Peru, I quickly learned that the postal service in that country was extremely unreliable. When people sent packages or mail through their service, they weren't always sure if the mail would arrive at its destination in a reasonable amount of time or even at all. A quick trick that I learned that helped me mail certain things was to mail items separately. For example, as missionaries, we walked along the streets very frequently and ran out of shoes because we wore them down. We learned that we could send one shoe at a time because no one would open a package and steal one shoe. As frustrating as people can get with our, custer, with our country's postal service, I am happy to say that we will never have to worry about things of that nature when it comes to receiving our mail at the U.S. Post Office.
There are federal laws that prohibit the tampering of mail in any fashion. I am very grateful for these laws and it helps me feel secure in the mail processing and receiving of packages and letters.